Hello everybody, welcome to my presentation titled Requirements of Equality Assurance Equality Control for Steel Construction Presented by Ali Ammar Abed, a student in University of Baghdad College of Engineering Civil Engineering Department This is the outlines for my subject today and in the beginning as an overview two of the tallest buildings in the world which is the Burj Khalifa in Dubai and the famous Petronas Twin Towers in Malaysia Imagine how just one centimeter deviation would affect these buildings. So the quality is the secret word to achieving these big projects. Indeed, the trademarks of the quality are the pyramids in Egypt, which are more than 7,000 years old. Quality control. The quality control is defined as a group of operations, activities, or tests that should be done in a definite way to achieve the required quality for the final products. In construction projects, the final product is a building or structure that should function properly. The first step in quality control is to define the levels of supervision during all project phases to be sure that every phase is performed properly according to the required specifications. Why is quality control important? The improvement of quality provides many benefits. Quality control minimizes mistakes by ensuring that work is performed correctly. Quality assurance is a way of preventing mistakes and defects in manufactured products and avoiding problems when delivering products or services to customers. The quality assurance designate should act for and in behalf of the owner or engineer on all inspection, entity and quality matters that are within the scope of the contract documents. Quality assurance should ensure that the final product conforms to the specifications and that the workers are competent and able to achieve high performance. Apply the company's policies among all project sectors regardless of staff changes. Provide a finished product that meets the required specifications and reduces costs by reducing waste and defects. The variation in steel structures is less than that in, in the concrete industry as the steel sections and plates are delivered from the mills under the control of the manufacturer, so the control of quality is very high. However, the quality inspector on site should receive and accept these materials within the allowable limits of the code. The main problem in steel structure is in either bolded or welded connections. The first step in inspection is the, in the mill. In the manufacture of a steel, tight controls are exercised by various of steel mills, constant checks are made by the mills metallurgist, and samples for chemical analysis as well as physical tests on samples from the rolled material are usually witnessed by the customer's inspector for conformity with the specifications. So the steels of different types are edge painted in different colors in accordance with a standardized color scheme and this method of identification is continued in the fabrication shop. In the ideal situation, inspection in the structural fabricating shop is performed by two different organizations. One group is the fabricator's own quality control force, the other is the customer's inspector. Unfortunately, good and reliable shop inspection by the fabricator is not as prevalent as one would hope. It's generally limited to larger companies and the extent of inspection is almost proportional to the size of the fabricating shop. Inspection at the job site. This should include a check on the camber of buildup girders and on the alignment of welded members prone to distortion during shipment. Particular attention should be given to the erection equipment and the procedures to assure performance and segments of erection and submit them to various destructive and non-destructive tests. Such early inspection efforts will provide proof that the procedure specified or used can or cannot produce a good weld. Now move on to the AISC requirements for QAQC. Here we see the requirements of the American Institute for Steel Construction, specifications for steel construction. We see in the section N, general provisions and the fabricator and erector quality control programs.
In this, the fabricator and erector shall establish, maintain, and implement QC procedures to ensure that their work is performed in accordance with this specification and the construction documents. First one is the material identification. Material identification procedures shall comply with the requirements of the section 6.1 of the AISC Code of Standard Practice for Steel Buildings and Bridges hereafter referred to as code of standard practice and shall be monitored by the fabricator's quality control inspector or QCI. Number two is the fabricator quality control procedures. The fabricator's QC procedures shall address inspection of the following as minimum as applicable. A is the shop welding high strength bolting and details in accordance with the section and five. B shop cut and finished surfaces in accordance with section M2. C. Shop heating for cambering, curving, and straightening in accordance with section uh, M2.1. Number three is the erector quality control procedures. The erector's quality control procedures shall address an inspection of the following as minimum as applicable. A. Field welding, high strength balling, and details in accordance with section M5. B. Steel deck in accordance with SDI standard for quality control and quality assurance for installation of steel deck and others. Now move on to the fabricator and erector documents. First one is the submittals for steel construction. The fabricator or erector shall submit the following documents for review by the engineer of report or the engineer of reports designing in accordance with Code of Standard Practice Section 4.4 prior to the fabrication or erection as applicable. A is the shop drawing unless shop drawing have been furnished by others. B the erection drawings unless erection drawings have been furnished by others. Number two is the available documents for steel construction. The following documents shall be available in electronic or printed form for the review by the EUR or the EUR's design prior to the fabrication uh, or erection as applicable unless otherwise required in the construction documents to be submitted. A for main structural steel elements, copies of material test reports in accordance with section A3.1. B for steel casting and forgings copies of materials test reports in accordance with section A3.2 C for fasteners copies of manufacturers certifications in accordance with the section A3.3 and finally D for anchor rods and threaded rods copies of material tests and reports in accordance with section A3.4 and move on to the next one is the inspection and non-destructive testing personnel Number one is the quality control inspection qualifications. The QC welding inspection personnel should be qualified the satisfaction of the fabricators or erectors QC program as applicable and in accordance with either of the following. A. Associate welding inspectors, AWI or higher as defined in standard for the qualification of welding inspectors, AWSB 5.1 or B. Qualified under the provisions of the AWS. For the bolting inspection, the QC bolting inspection personnel shall be qualified on the basis of the documented training and experience in structural bolting inspection. Two is the quality assurance inspector qualifications. The QA welding inspectors shall be qualified to the satisfaction of for the QA agency's written practice and in accordance with either of the following. A. Welding inspector as WI or senior welding inspector as WI as defined in standard for the qualification of welding inspectors. B. Qualified under the provisions of the AWS QA bolting inspection same as the QC bolting inspection shall be qualified on the basis of documented training and experience. Three is the NDT personnel qualification. NDT personnel for the NDT other than visual shall be qualified in accordance with their employer's written practice shall meet or exceed the criteria of AWS and for the others minimum requirements for inspection of structural steel buildings, approved fabrication and erectors, non-conforming material and workmanship. There is no time to mention them. Finally, we uh, move to the engineer's duties. In addition to convincing the owner of the necessity of paying for adequate inspection, the engineer must number one, function in several ways to assure attainment and constant maintenance of high level inspection. Two, the engineer must, in the development of the design, make the proper selection of steels consistent with fabrication requirements and service conditions of the structure. 
Three, he must develop details and can be fabricated as well as adequately inspected, painted, and repaired if need be in the shop or any place and in final position. Four, the engineer should assure himself by investigation that the inspection agency under considerations is bypassed the products and reputation fully experienced in the work to be performed. And finally, here are my references I used to make this presentation. If you want to know more about the subject, you can visit them. Thank you for your attention.